Good morning, everyone. Welcome to my channel. This is Creative Cooking in Ani's Kitchen, and my name is Ani. And today I am going to bring you my recipe for a delicious, very fluffy, kind of tender crumb, a nice uh, crust on a whole wheat bread. Now, this and it's going to be a honey whole wheat. Now, this is 100% stone ground whole wheat, okay? And I get it from Bob's Red Mill. And this is a five-pound bag. So, anyway, there's a recipe for whole wheat, honey whole wheat bread on the back of this bag. But I've got my own version that I'm going to share with you. As always, this is Creative Cooking. We get creative up in here. And we have a good time with it. I hope Bob doesn't get mad. I'm not mad at his recipe on the back of his bag. <laughs> but, you know, to each his own. Okay. I guess haters going to hate to potate. So here's what I got. Kidding aside. The ingredients are two cups of that stone ground whole wheat. All right. Flour which I have in here, and then underneath here, I have about three quarters of a cup. Well, no, I don't. I'm sorry. I have it over here. There I go, lying already. Lord, forgive me. Okay, I have three quarter cups. This is a half cup, and this is a quarter cup, and we're going to go ahead and throw that in there, okay? Sorry about that noise. Time to wake up and give God your glory, glory. Remember that song? Rise and shine and give God your glory, glory. My uh, childhood friend and I, and actually my daughter's godmother, I guess that makes her my god sister, uh, we used to sing that <laughs> on Sundays. All right, a teaspoon of salt goes into that and shake that around. You always want to mix your salt in with your flowers before you add your yeast, you know, because direct salt uh, kills your yeast, so you don't want to do that. But anyway, speaking of which, we're going to need two teaspoons of the um Dry active yeast. I'm going to put mine in my warm milk. This is one cup of warm milk. And you want to warm it up between 105 and, oh, 120 is okay on this one. Okay, so two teaspoons are going right in there. And, of course, to that, we're going to add just a little bit of sugar. So let's just get a teaspoon of sugar because the yeast loves sugar. Just loves it. They behave well. So... Give them a little bit of sugar, okay? Be sweet to the yeast, the beasties. All right, so we're going to go ahead and stir that up. And while that is proving, okay, we have to prove it. It's got to prove itself to us, actually. All right, you all got that party going on in there. You're our honored guest. Can't bake without the wake. All right, so. So once you get your yeasty beasties nicely blended up with that warm bed of milk. Oh, and they love it. They're nice and cozy right now and they're munching. You can also put in a little bit of flour. They like to feast on that too, of course. That's what, you know, that's why they help make the bread fries. As they eat the flour, they release these carbon dioxide bubbles and just Okay, so the next thing, while that's proving, for about five minutes or so, we'll see. We're going to go ahead and turn our oven on to bake, conventional. Um, and, well, actually, airflow, bake, at 375. That's what we want. Start. Okay, we're going to add our water to the bottom of the oven. We have where well, we have a, a water pan. 
We'll add a couple of cups of water to it to start some steam in this oven. Oh yeah. Keep them yeasty beasties nice and cozy. Now the first, you always want um, a spring bake. In other words, don't ever do a cold start on bread. Okay, because the yeast, what happens is in the first 10 minutes that you put it in a hot, hot oven, it springs up. I mean, it just reacts. It explodes. And, and the first 10 minutes is what springs up that bread, which is why sometimes you have to slice the bread on top so it doesn't explode on you because it springs, meaning it's a fast reaction to the heat. And it's a quick rise that it will split the bread, you know. That's why some people have explosions in their bread. But you have to slice the top of the bread to help release those gases. You know, give them a way out so they don't break your bread. So anyway, the first 10 minutes in a hot oven is very crucial to the remainder of the baking of your bread. Okay? Because after the first 10 minutes, after that first spring break, oh, bake, I said break, <laughs> Um, it'll slow down and then it evens out, okay, into a nice rice, slow rice and bake. All right, so we're done with our salt here and all that talking. All right, the next thing we're going to do is to add to this flour mix. This is my touch, my creativity. Make it your own or not, your choice, or do you. All right, so we're going to do... Uh, tablespoon of uh, instant milk powder we're going to do potato flakes Let's do a couple of teaspoons of that and all this extra dry ingredient that I'm adding will make up for the liquid the added liquid that I'm doing too we're going to do for every cup of flour, you use one quarter teaspoon of um, vital wheat gluten. That's what this is. So I'm going to do three because we almost we have almost three cups. We have two and three quarter cups actually. Okay, so that's my vital wheat gluten. Okay. And then this is dry malt powder. And I'm going to put in, oops, one tablespoon dry malt powder. Okay. All right. Now that'll help with the rise, actually. Um, so now that we've got that in there, let's go ahead and give this a good mix if I can get my favorite, okay, whisk out. Is that a really good mix? Okay, we got all of our dry ingredients in. All right, now we're going to move over to the... Um, KitchenAid stand mixer. Let's go ahead and do that. Give you a little focus. Okay. And a little bit closer. All right. So. I'm going to put my stuff away here so I can clear my counter some. I still have the egg. All right. I'm going to put the stuff away. So, we're going to put our flour into our stand mixer mixing bowl. Okay. And then we're 
going to add the rest of our ingredients. All right. Two tablespoons of oil, doesn't matter what oil, any oil, I'm using EVO, there's two. Okay, and with the oil still in the spoon, that's what you're gonna use the honey. And you want, uh, let's see, I would say two tablespoons of honey. And the oil will help the honey come out of your spoon faster. That's why you put the honey, you measure out the honey after your oil using the same measuring spoon. Okay? See? Pretty much comes out all of it easier. Then also you want your, this is done. I'm going to use some blackstrap molasses and put a tablespoon of that. Oh, I can get this open. Oh, God, it smells so good. All right. That'll also help it give some color. I need to wash that lid out. It gets sticky after a while. All right, so with all that done, we're going to add our one egg, okay? Then we are going to, ladies and gentlemen, go ahead and whisk this up on low, just to whisk it up a little bit. So just to get everything mixed. If you have a paddle, you can use a paddle too. Plumpiness, that means the flour is pretty much all blended in there with your other mixtures. You see like little bumps, you know. Then, as you can see, the yeasty beasties are alive. They're alive and well. This was one cup, and now we're up to a little bit above one and a half. So that's a good sign that they're awake. We're going to slowly pour that in. Okay, now that that's done, Go ahead and scrape the sides a little bit. Okay. And mix it on high for about five minutes. Time out. Five minutes. I'll bring you back. Okay. Our time is up. This off and I'll let you take a look at the dough. See, this is the dough. A little sticky, but not a whole lot of. See that? Okay, now we're going to just knead this a little bit more. Okay, go ahead and there's still some around the edges that all comes out too. So, okay, I'll go ahead and use this A little flour. On 
the spatula. We're going to flower the surface over here that I've got going on down here. As you can see. Okay. Let's put the camera right to it. Move it over just a little bit. Okay. Just a little bit of flower. Don't need a whole lot. Okay. Put some flower on this. hook out that to soak and then we're going to get our dough Exactly what you want. Okay. All right. Pull the rest of this out with my pants. Most of it anyway. And onto the surface of my workstation. Well, I will proceed to give it about 50 turns of hand kneading. And, okay. And that should take care of the rest of the kneading. Put a little bit of flour on top. Lock. Okay, and then just put the turn. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and fifty. All right, so. The dough is nice and soft. See? Nice and soft. Always pack your dough. Let that eat those easty beasties know who the boss is. Uh huh. Who's burning this? <laughs> At least some of that tension. Alright, so now we've got our little dough ball, okay, and we're going to cover that up. Show sure is. For 15 minutes. So, time it on. And there we go. The oven is preheated to 375. It is there already. And I have my little bread loaf pan. Uh, I'm not sure what this is. Probably 9 by 4 is it? Might be. But anyway, yeah, it looks about 4 inches across. About 9 inches. Anyway, just go ahead and lightly grease it right there. I have a little bit too much. You want something that the bread can hold on to on the sides and stuff, you know, stick to and climb so as it rises. So you don't want it too greasy. You just want it lightly coated. Lightly coated. Okay? That way it has the walls to grab onto and climb. All right, so there we go. See? Lightly coated. Now, one thing that I like to do is I like to do an egg white glaze with milk 
glaze. Um, before I bake because it provides a shine to it that I just live and that's what I'm going to do I've decided so this is just you don't have to do this this is just something that I like to do I prefer doing okay and that is it. Just my touch. Alright, so I am going to put this bit of egg yolk in the fridge. Alright. To use later with another dish. get a nice little sheen on the bread. Just something I like doing. Something I've discovered. It looks really, because you go to a bakery and you see these loaves of bread and they're so nice and shiny. You're like, wow, it really does look appetizing. It's inviting, you know. So I figured, you know, I'm going to do that too. And uh, I found out you just use the egg white. You don't use the the yolk. I mean, if you get a little yolk in there, it's no, no biggie. But the, the egg yolk kind of helps to darken or brown. The egg white is more of a glaze. So, that's the difference there. I baked this bread. I've got to get to sweeping and mopping. It is Sunday already. Weekend has gone by way too fast. Yesterday was laundry day, and then this week is going to be very busy. You know, I go to dialysis three times a week, and uh, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays usually. And, you know, you got to sit in that chair for four hours. It's no fun. But it is a lifesaver um, until I get a transplant. And it's for the kidneys. Anyway, uh, so I've got that going on on a weekly basis. But uh, then I also have appointments you know with my other health teams during the week and then this weekend is our gathering for Feast of Tabernacles tonight Yom Kippur starts you know it's a 24 hour uh, period for atonement you know where you are repentive you ask whoever you may have trespassed against for forgiveness you make amends you stay in prayer and fasting and uh, the fasting uh, the description of fasting is anywhere from 8 to 12 hours after a meal. So, you know, traditions of men will have you believe differently. But since uh, 
Yeshua, our Lord and Savior, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, has taken upon all of our sins and redemption, and all we have to do is go to Him and ask and pray in all supplications, you know, for forgiveness and confess with our mouths what we have, what our sins are, on a daily basis, because we fall short on a daily basis. Well, you know. That's, that's what we need to do, actually, to repent. We are forgiven. Um, there is no more atonement. Atonement was usually done with blood sacrifices of animals, and that has been done away with because uh, Yeshua became our sacrificial lamb. So the blood ordinances, you know, that and circumcision and all that, you know, they have been done away with. That's what... Uh, Yeshua HaMashiach fulfilled, okay? So now people do circumcisions basically should only be for hygiene purposes, you know, stuff like that. But the, since uh, Yeshua uh, sacrificed for us and our sins upon that cross and uh, shed his blood for us, we no longer have to do those things. The circumcision is now of the heart, okay? It's not of the physical body or animal. So that's been done away with. But in remembrance of him, you know, we can take that day and not atone, but repent and ask him for forgiveness. And also it's a good way to make amends with one another, you know, bring peace and joy into each other's hearts. And there is never, ever uh, time not to pray, okay? So that's also a plus. But the rest of it, all the traditions of men, like you can't work, you can't this, you can't um, do any pleasure of the flesh and all this, it, that's traditions of men, I mean, anymore because that's been done away with, you know. You uh, you repent of your heart, circumcision is of the heart, blood ordinances are no more. Uh, that's not to say that you can't, uh, like for Feast of Tabs or any, the three days that the Lord instructs us to keep in remembrance of Him, which is Passover, not Easter, honey. This is not, we're not worshiping pagan gods, okay? Uh, Passover, then Pentecost, and then Feast of Tabs, which is coming up. Uh, that's the gathering, okay? Uh, that we celebrate because of the gathering. But uh, we keep those three days in remembrance of Him. We can always still, you know, uh, cook up the best of our stock, you know, the best of everything that we have for that day to keep in remembrance. So we just can't make it as a sacrifice. We can't sacrifice that animal to, because that was tried, that would try, that means that you're trying to trump what Yeshua did. And Yeshua is our sacrifice. He became our ultimate sacrifice. So Yeshua uh, he didn't come to get rid of the law. Don't get me wrong or anything. We must keep the law. Yahuwah says it over and over in Revelations and Mark and Matt. Over and over, we must. What Yeshua did was he came to fulfill. Okay? He fulfilled those blood ordinances. He fulfills the law because by the law we stand convicted and we are sinners. You know? None of us are perfect. But with Yeshua to go to and repent, I mean, we have to strive to walk righteously and not sin. That's why it's important to keep the commandments in our foreheads, in our minds, and which is the heart of minds, you know, the intellect of uh, the soul, the spiritual uh, intellect of the soul. You know, we are to keep that in there, the commandments. That way we can strive not to break them and to better ourselves. And when we better ourselves, we have peace and joy in our hearts, okay? There's nothing to feel guilty or sorrowful about other than there's nothing new under the sun. You know, these bodies, they're made of the earth, you know, it's organic. And 
they get diseased and they die. It's temporal, you know. We have to feed the spiritual body. And when you do that, everything seems to fall into place. Why? Because you're obedient to God, His Word, or Yahuwah. And uh, He blesses you. You know, and I don't know about you, but I'd rather have uh, divine power on my side, you know, and his blessings instead of his curses. So even though his judgment does uh, prove to mold us into righteous beings, okay, so that we can obtain all the goodness from him, uh, there is, he does, he, he is a jealous God. And, he, you know, he's a God of wrath also and a God of war. So, you know, keeping that in mind, you know, his world, his rules, you know, he created it. So we have to respect that, I find. Anyway, that's as for me and my house. Hmm. We will serve Yahuwah and Yeshua and the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. Okay, so anyway, enough of that. <laughs> but um, tonight starts Yom Kippur again. Day of Atonement. And I'm just going to observe it as a remembrance of him and the people that lived during that time. Just, you know, to take that moment to maybe lift up some extra prayers, you know, if there is such a thing. Because I, I pray often. I pray daily. We study daily in this house. But um, just to keep in remembrance of him, you know, and to those that lived during that time. But uh, hallelujah. <laughs> All right, enough of that. Uh, we've got about less than two minutes to go. I'll bring you right back. Okay, time's up. 15 minutes are up. So let's go ahead. Oh, look how pretty she is. Oh, yes. All right, so now it's really simple. We're just going to... With just a dab of oil in our hands, so that's a bit too much. Okay. We're just going to spread out the bread, no big deal. Okay. And roll it up. And no big deal. Just roll. Okay. Pinch, pinch, pinch. Okay. And then kind of just take the ends in. Look at that. It's already got a slit. Isn't that nice? Okay. Take our loaf, put it in the pan, and we want this to rise at least above the the rim, so it doesn't dry up on me. I'm going to take a little bit of this oil. Brush the top of it. Okay. All right. So we're going to cover this up. And now here's the longest part. We're going to allow this to proof for... 45 minutes. Boing. We got the timer set for 45 minutes. I'll bring you back. Okay, our time's up. I turned off the timer. And let's take a look. Oh, look how pretty that is. And it has risen above the rim, as you can see. That's what we want. So, now what we're going to do is we're going to 
slice. I like to go gentle. I know some people go, shoo, shoo, shoo. I don't like doing that. You know, this is my baby. <laughs> my creation. This is my creation. Anyway, being silly. Alright, so here we go. We're going to do the glaze. I want this puppy to shine. So, it's going into the 375 degree oven for exactly 35 minutes, okay? So, in the oven it goes, I'm going to add some more water to the bottom pan. Don't look at my oven, it's dirty. I'm going to clean it as soon as I get done with this dish. That's all water staying down there. So, set my timer for 35 minutes, and I shall bring you all back, and we'll take a look. Okay, time's up. Ooh, look at this beautiful golden brown bread. Ah, oh, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that shine. You see that shine? That's what I like seeing. All right, let's go ahead and turn it out. Turn the oven off. Clean. All right. Dump, 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 dump. Oh my God, it feels so light and airy. Look at that beautiful bread, y'all. Look at that beautiful bread. Look at that shine. Huh? Look at that. Look at that glaze. That is just absolutely gorgeous. Huh? Nice rise. Yep. So we're going to slice into that as soon as it cools down. And we will show you the crumb. Okay, folks. Let's go ahead and cut into this, shall we? It's so hard, I would think. But for the sake of the video and the fact that I have... I'm making some baked rigatoni, uh, meat, with meat, meat-filled rigatoni. So I've got to get cooking. It's already 2.13, and then I've got to sweep and mop this kitchen floor. And when I do that, I pull out the range 
I pull out the refrigerator, you know, wipe the, the counters on the side, wipe the walls down, the side of the refrigerator and stove, and sweep them up behind there, push everything back, and then continue on for the rest of the kitchen. So that's how I do mine. Because of all the cooking I do, you know, things can fall between the cracks, and you don't want that mess. You don't want to invite any bugs in. So you got to keep it as clean as possible. And that's the way I do mine. But anyway, in the interest of time, I'm going to go ahead and cut this nail. And let's go ahead and check out the crown. Why won't we? Why don't we, I should say. Oh, look at this beautiful, beautiful crown, you all. Look at that. Isn't that just a beautiful, beautiful crumb? The outside is nice and crispy. It's not a very thick crust. It's nice and thin, you see? And then there's, there's the crumb. Look how soft that is. I told you it'd be fluffy. Oh, yeah. So soft. See that? It doesn't even need butter, y'all. I'm going to go ahead and try to take a bite. Mmm. This is so moist. This is really, really good. You don't have to try this. This is my honey. Wheat bread, and it is unbelievably delicious. What would I do different? I would probably add two tablespoons of butter and more honey. With, instead of three quarter cups of flour, I'd probably make it one whole cup of flour. That's what I think I'll do different and then add the extra liquid, which is the melted butter and the extra honey. That's it, that's all I would do. But this is absolutely delicious. You can taste the honey. You can definitely taste the molasses. Oh, it's delicious. <laughs> it is really, really good, you all. Go ahead and make yourself some. Get you some of this crumb. I sliced this pretty thin, so there's not much crumb in here, but. Look at that. Look, 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 look. Ah! Look at that. Mmm. Yeah. Well, that's it for now. Y'all, make yourself some of this delicious bread. It's very simple to make, as you can see.